Hi, I am Charlotte and this is Bookish Mama Blooms. I am here to tell you that Pamela Anderson has read more books than you. She's read more books than me, for sure. Um, maybe not in total. I can't, you know, I can't say she can compete with some of you guys that read like over 100 a year. But she has read a massive section of what I would call the canon. And she's also read outside of it. Um, her biography, um, Love Pamela, which I recently read, it is self-written and it is just a, a history of how she uses literature to get through certain things in life. I didn't expect that from it and I don't feel like they really pushed that aspect of it when they've been talking about it, but that is essentially what it is. It even ends with her saying that she doesn't know where she'd be without books. So I thought it would be a fun challenge for me to collect, I've basically gone through the whole book after I'd read it, I have written down 45 books or slash authors that she has mentioned and I'm going to go through them all with you now. I'm going to also make a list under this video and I am going to try and read, to begin with, I'm going to try and read all the ones on my shelf that I haven't read, that she has read and then I'm, I think I'm going to try and read them all over, you know, an amount of time that I will not specify. Um, because they all interest me and they're all, as I say, they're all a really good grounding. I think we're so, I am so used to on BookTube looking for the newest book, the newest release, moving away from the kind of whiteness, the straightness that is, that is the canon and trying to find something new and interesting. And there's something to be said for that, but there's also something to be said for the fact that a lot of people who write um, from whatever background will know who Shakespeare is and will have read Shakespeare and will have read poets um, like Dylan Thomas and even though we can't keep reading stuff like that all the time there's something to be said for knowing it and for reading those writers and for seeing what people are maybe responding to and reacting to so yeah it's I found it very inspirational and I will do a review of this book in February um, in the wrap-up so let's start from the start. Pablo Neruda. Um, yeah, I mean, Pablo Neruda I've had on my shelves for about 15 years and I have read his work. So I don't need to read this. I've got 20 love poems and a song of despair. And I've also got the selected poems, which have the poems in Spanish on the opposite page. And Pamela was saying that she loves to read the Spanish poems aloud. Um, even though she doesn't necessarily know what she's saying, she just loves the sound of it. And I have done exactly the same. And that was one of many points in the biography where I was like, oh, OK, we do the same thing with books. <laughs> really, really nice. Uh, Pablo Neruda, if you don't know, um, was not a necessarily great guy um, outside of writing poetry. And he's kind of cancelled in my eyes as somebody to look up to in any way. I won't be buying any more of his stuff. I was actually surprised this was on my shelf because I kind of thought I jettisoned it. But yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I jettison everybody who's got a dodgy history because half of my bookshelves would be empty. Um, but sometimes I just think, OK, I'm done with that author. There's somebody else that can replace that author. Um, but I haven't done that with these. So I guess I will keep them. Um, the poetry is amazing. Um, Bullfinch's mythology, so I'm going to put a little picture here. I think any kind of mythology will do. Um, I think Stephen Fry's brought a recent one out about Greek mythology. I think this is Greek mythology. But again, this is something really, really interesting. Let's go back to the myths and legends. Let's go back to where stories began. Let's go as far back as we can. And I'm obviously not saying that the Greek myths and legends are the beginning of stories, but they're one of the beginnings, you know, and there's plenty of other cultures that have got their mythologies that we can refer to. So that that was interesting to me. Um, I always some of these people I'm going to say their names wrong because I've only ever seen their names written down and yeah I just Carl Jung is it Jung? Uh, Mem Memories, Dreams and Reflections was a specific book that she named I don't have any Jung and I kind of haven't gone there with Jung or Freud or anybody like that because I thought that maybe we'd replace them with other people but let's go back you know let's see what these people had to say originally uh, this is a guy, I'm going to get his books for sure, Joseph Campbell. So he has written Reflections on the Art of Living, which is one of her favourite books. And if I go down my list, she's also written The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Um, he's also written The Hero with a Thousand Faces, which is one I'm really interesting. She goes on a lot about Joseph Campbell. Um, moving on, Marie-Louise von Franz. Maybe I've over-Frenched the saying of that. Individuation in fairy tales, 
that sounds amazing. I've not even seen the cover of this, so I've got an image that's going to be amazing. Let's hope it is. Um, the next one that she mentions, she loves Shakespeare, and her father had a copy of Shakespeare's works. Probably not this copy, because this is quite um, new. This is the Macmillan version of his complete works. I love this version. The pages are tissue paper thin, which I kind of like. I think it's a novelty. Um, I have read a couple of plays. I've read Romeo and Juliet, Macbeth, Hamlet, King Lear. I'm trying to think of something else. So I'm not necessarily going to try and read uh, any more, but I think I do need to have it out on a table so that I can just dip in. Um, she's memorised things like she she particularly liked um, Hamlet. Um, and she she does a little bit of it in there. She says that she can just bring it forth whenever she wishes. It, I don't know if I finished that story. Her dad had a copy in the house. Did I say that? Um, Shirley MacLaine, out on a limb. So this is quite cute. She took this with her to LA when she moved to LA or she, she went to LA to work and then she saw Shirley MacLaine in a restaurant and couldn't stop staring at her and Shirley MacLaine gave her a dirty look. <laughs> I just love that. And I bet the I bet the biography is really interesting as well. Um, Knightwood, this is where I'm going to pronounce the name wrong. Juna Barnes, not sure. Um, I kind of know this book and I haven't, I feel like when I see the cover, when I look all these up, I'm going to be like, oh, of course, that's the book. Um, but yeah, Marilyn loves that book. Doris Lessing's The Golden Notebook. For the love of God, why have I not read this? This book has haunted me because it's one of those books that comes up in other books and I've still not read it. And I feel like I did start it. I think I've started it a couple of times and I've never gone through with it. So I have read a Lessing, but I couldn't even tell you which one. Can't even tell you which one. So this is on the list for this year. This is happening. Uh, where are we now? Uh, Goethe. Is that how you say it? I, I always used to say Goethe, and I imagine a lot of British people say Goethe, but I'm pretty sure it's Goethe. Um, I haven't got any of his works, and I feel like I should get some. So I'm going to add this to the list of to buy. Uh, the Drama of the Gifted Child by Alice Miller. I feel like this is a kind of psychology thing. I'll put the picture up. Is it something I'm necessarily going to be interested in? I don't know. But the, the drama of the gifted child is interesting because a lot of ADHD people were labelled as gifted when they were younger and then they don't sort of fulfil that promise. So I might have a little look at the blurb and see if this is appropriate. Uh, Angela Davis. For shame, for shame. I have not read any Angela Davis. So this is Women, Race and Class. If you can hear the dogs. I don't know what's going on. I think there's a delivery. Um, Stephen will do it he's in the other room um so i feel like this is the one yeah i feel like this is the one she would have read she doesn't name it specifically and i felt like when she was naming authors without a specific book it meant that she'd read several so maybe she has read the other ones as well uh, but yeah i've got to read that so that's also on my list i'm gonna pop that over here for things that are on my list that i have james baldwin yeah, she loves James Baldwin. Again, doesn't name a specific book, so I imagine she's read several. I've got Go Tell It on the Mountain, which is kind of a classic, but there are plenty of others to choose from. This is my push to get this one read. Uh, where are we now? James Baldwin. Acting the First Lesson by Boleslavsky. I think I said that right. I've got a picture there. Um, so many times when she's talking about books, these remind me of books that Marilyn Monroe has read. In fact, some of these are books that Marilyn Monroe has read. So I feel like, I don't know what era that comes from, whether it's after Marilyn's life or not, but I'm interested. I'm so interested in Marilyn. I'm so now so interested in Pamela. I might go out and get that one. The Prison Letters of Fidel Castro. I have not read that. And I was obsessed with Cuba in my 20s. And I'm still a little bit obsessed now. Um, she really, really is interested in Cuba. Another weird coincidence with the, the things that we're interested in that are quite random and um yeah I, I've not read that one Fidel wanted to meet her but something came about and she ended up not doing it I find it really interesting that Fidel wanted to meet her but that's a whole other story uh she's obviously read the motorcycle diaries by Che Guevara um pop a picture of that up I can't find my copy 
as I say, I was obsessed with Cuba, so I have read The Motorcycle Diaries, and I have read the massive John Lee Anderson book on Che Guevara, which I thoroughly recommend, and I'll put a picture of that up now. Um, so I, I don't have anything to read there, but I would recommend to you guys to read it. Um, or watch the film of The Motorcycle Diaries. Very good. Uh, Bukowski. I've not got any Bukowski. She doesn't say which particular one. Um, I'll put up the most popular one. I don't even, can't even think of a name. <laughs> it's really bad. I don't know why it's never really appealed to me. It's very Boise is how I feel about it. But maybe I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, Ginsburg. Uh, I'm not massively interested in the beats and I'm not really interested in Ginsburg. I may give Howl a go. There's a chance. I haven't got it, but I may. Henry Miller. Interestingly, she's not a massive fan of Henry Miller, but she's into Henry Miller because she loves Anais Nin. So um, I found that interesting because I have got, I did have Anais Nin. Am I saying her name right? I have, I didn't, I don't have it now. I've got rid of it because I think I've had it on my shelf for so long. I obviously rejected it last year and now I'm going to have to buy another copy because I want it again. She is, of all the authors, she seems to have a massive connection to her. And so I think she read Henry Miller because of their connection, but she found him a bit, I can't remember the word she used, but it just came off that she found him a bit creepy. And I think I would agree with that. So, very astute observation. So now I'll put Anais in. So she's read everything by her. She says that. So you could, if you've got any of that on your shelves, that's, that would be one you could go for. Frida Kahlo. Um, so Frida Kahlo didn't specifically write anything, obviously. Um, I have got so many books on Frida Kahlo and I cannot find, and I, I hope that it's because it's somewhere on a different shelf, cannot find the journals, which were one of my prized possessions. So the journals are like um, a facsimile edition in colour of her journals with her writings and some doodles. They're beautiful. They're like gorgeous and stunning. And there's a commentary that goes alongside. That's the one that I am putting up as, as the sort of thing that she has encountered because she says that she looks for everything that she can find aside from the paintings. And that's where I would go if I were her. Um, the power, oh, another Joseph um, Campbell, The Power of Myth. Um, that would interest me. I really would love to know if any of you have read Joseph Campbell because again, that's a name that crops up several times. This is a name that I'm gonna be embarrassed if I get it wrong. Khalil Gibran. I, I don't know why I can't say it. I feel like it's because I've said it in my head like that for so many years when I was a bookseller shelving it. And then I've probably heard people say it the right way since, but in my head it's lodged as what it was when I was shelving. I have got The Prophet somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So that's the one I would include in this challenge. It's the one I, I'm, that is on my to read pile now. Iron John by Robert Bly. I really want this. As far as I know, it's about masculinity. She's really fascinated by gender roles. Um, I'm not, I'll give you a review about what I think about what she does with all these books, by the way, um, how she then uses the information. It's a different thing to, to the books themselves. He, She, We by Robert A. Johnson. Never heard of that, pop it up there. Um, I think psychology, again, she, she's going through a period of trying to better herself. Uh, Just Kids by Patti Smith, a book that I've always wanted. Don't understand why I don't own it. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in HMV, which is a music store in the UK, and it's kind of on the cheap. So I might head in there. In fact, I imagine there'll be a Ginsberg in there as well. That sort of uh, strikes me as the sort of thing they'd sell. Uh, she's read Plato. She doesn't say which. Um, I imagine Symposium, but I don't know. Um, I've got that, again, somewhere, but I can't find it. So I have read it. I could do with giving it another go. I could give all the philosophers another go. You know, the hardcore start you know start of what we see as was the western side of philosophy just because again that's where a lot of other philosophers draw from even if they're rebelling against it so it's kind of useful to know um e.e e. cummings a poet's advice to students fascinating that she chose this um she's really into poetry there's lots of poetry in her book that she's written it's not very good but it that doesn't matter she's obviously getting a lot out of writing it and that's the important thing uh, Letters to a Young Poet by Raina Marine Rilk. I've, is it Rilk? Don't know. I have got to get this. This has come up not just in, in the Pamela book, but in a couple of other things recently. And it's that kind of serendipity where you've heard something so many times, you're like, okay, now, now I've got to. The Continuum Concept by Jean Liedlov. I have no idea what this is about. I'm guessing psychology, but I don't know. 
uh, Napoleon's love letters to Josephine in the French. <laughs> uh, she did say it was hard. She was living in France. She's French Canadian. And so she's, well, she's Canadian. So does that mean she's French Canadian? I don't know. That are oh, Canadians, please don't get mad. She's from Canada. She does speak French. Canadian French. That's all I can say. Um, so she she tried to read Napoleon's letters to Josephine to immerse herself in the language so that she could get by in France because she was finding that her Quebecois, I don't know, is that right? I know nothing, was getting in the way of her understanding um, French French. I might cut this whole bit out because I sound ludicrous. Um, where are we now? Now, I don't know, I've written this. Jens Peter Jakobsen. I don't know who that is. I don't know what they've written. That name is mentioned. I'll put a book up of theirs in the corner. Emily Dickinson. We all know Emily Dickinson. I don't own any. I don't know why. Why don't I own any? I need to get, that's another, I'm going to correct it. I'm going to get some. Uh, Singing from the Well by Rinaldo Arenas. Don't know that one. I'll pop a little picture up there for you for a moment. Nicolas Bouvier's The Way of the World. So I'm guessing another psychology one. I'll put that one up there. I don't know what that is. Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. Uh, this also has Three Guineas, which I don't know if I've ever read Three Guineas. I don't even know what it's about. Room of One's, you know, again, Virginia Woolf. You know, racist. There's lots of issues. But she did write a cracking book and... Room of One's Own is a classic for a reason. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm into, oh, look at this picture. Is this a Vanessa Bell? Yeah, I love Vanessa Bell and Duncan Grant's work. Amazing. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a classic. It's great. And I think I might need to reread that. So I'm putting that in my pile for reading this year. Um, Noam Chomsky. She loves a bit of Noam. I have only got Power and Terror post 9-11 talks and interviews. I've not got anything else. I've actually seen Chomsky talk. I went to a lecture and he was great. And he really likes Wales. And he was pro devolution, which is always good. Um, but I don't know much else. Um, I'm kind of ignorant on, on his thoughts. So yeah, I might give, I don't know if I want to read this particular one. This is a very sort of snapshot in time. I might get something else of his and ditch that one uh women who love too much by robin norwood i've heard of this not massively interested in reading this i don't have a problem with loving too much anything i have a problem with hating uh codependent no more by melody beatty again i think this would be really good for some and codependency is something that gets talked about a lot online it's not something i feel that i am so i don't necessarily think i'm gonna give that one a go proust Oh, how many years have I had this book? I've actually studied <laughs> this book, as in, I think I wrote an essay on the first chapter. I mean, this is how you can get away with murder when you're doing a degree. Uh, I have not read it at all. But every time I eat a Madeline, I think of this book. And I actually love Madeline's because of how they taste and because of the first few pages of the book. Anyway, I'm almost more interested in him than I am in interested in reading it. But I've always said I was going to read it. So this is the year, 2023 is the year that I'm going to read Swan's Way. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks to Pamela Anderson. Leaves of Grass. Okay, this is my little beat up copy of Leaves of Grass and I don't know where I got it. Um, I have, does it say in the front where it's from? Oh, it's got a little dedication. That each succeeding year may be the brightest and the best is the sincere wish of Marie. Isn't that lovely? 6th of March 1943. That is so nice. Um, so I don't know where I got this. I must have got it from a second hand store somewhere, I guess. Um, Leaves of Grass. I've read Song of Myself and I love Song of Myself. Um, but I haven't read any of the rest of it. And I really want to because I love Whitman as a person, as an interesting person. I think there's obviously some issues, um, as there is with anyone historical but I am interested in him. So that is going in the to read pile. And maybe because it's quite a long selection of poetry, I might do a certain amount of pages a day. Maybe we'll do that at some point. Uh, the Power of the Actor by Ivana Chubuk. Never heard of it. 
again interested because of Pamela and and um, Marilyn. I feel like I, I don't know where that fits time wise, but um, I don't. Do you need to be an actor to be interested in acting? I think it teaches you a lot about your body, which is something I'm interested in. And the, oh, I've missed out Dylan. I must have skipped him somewhere. Uh, Dylan Thomas. She loves a bit of Dylan. And I've got here the omnibus, which is Under Milkwood, Poems, Stories and Broadcasts. My leg has gone dead. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> that is hurting. Um, if you have got any Dylan on your shelf, um, the poems are amazing. And I get the feeling that it's the poems that she's read. But really, for me, the thing that I love about Dylan are his short stories and his broadcasts. Um, they're amazing. Return Journey, where he's coming back to swap a, a person is coming back to Swansea to find a boy and the boy is himself and Swansea has just been bombed and it's covered in snow so he gets off the train and he doesn't recognize anything because all the buildings are gone and there's just this blanket of snow kind of covering the car carnage it's amazing okay it's it'll take you 10 minutes to read it and you'll never forget it so I thoroughly recommend that um, and the final one, which I really cannot believe, and I feel like I've done this before, I've looked for this, is Colette's short stories. So Colette wrote lots of short stories, as far as I know, but there's a particular collection that she wrote um, that was, or at least it was gathered, and it was about childhood. And I absolutely adored it in my 20s. It, it was, I don't know, there was, even though it was set in France, there was something about it that reminded me of my Welsh childhood. Um, I have got to get that. So that is another thing that I'm going to get and I'm going to reread this year. That's my list. Find the list in the notes, in the show notes and um, see, tell me how you've done. How many of the 45 books that Pamela Anderson has read have you read? Let me know. Bye.